Welcome to the Engineering and Medicine Symposium. Uh, I'm Elham Azizi, Assistant Professor of Biomedical Engineering uh, and co-chairing with Professor McPhail and Figueroa today. Uh, so first, we're going to hear from uh, Professor Paul Scheide. Uh, he's the Vikram Pandit Professor of Biomedical Engineering and Professor of Electrical Engineering and Radiology in Physics uh, and the Chair of our Department of Biomedical Engineering. Well, <clears throat> I really want to welcome everybody uh, to the 8th Annual Engineering in Medicine Symposium. Um, this is really one of our premier events in biomedical engineering, where we get to um, essentially bring together researchers, both from the School of Engineering and Applied Science and uh, the um, Medical Center to talk about how we can affect and improve uh, engineering for a healthy humanity. That's actually part of the uh, engineering school's mission. Engineering for humanity, engineering for a healthy humanity. First, I want to start off by, by acknowledging the folks that really put this together. So um, the chairs, Professor uh, Elham Azizi and Professors Jose McFarland Figueroa. Let's give them a round of applause for putting a fantastic program together. Um, also, there's a lot that goes into organizing this event. So I also want to thank um, Cameron Hadley, who is our communication and events manager in the department. <clears throat> and um, our, she's always part of our department, but now she's actually at the level of the School of Engineering, Alexis Newman, who's the director of events and communications in the School of Engineering, Alexis. And of course, um, one thing that's critical about this particular event is that it really does bring the School of Engineering together with the Columbia University Irvine Medical Center um, in a really uh, collaborative way. And this could not be done without the support of our deans, Dean Sifu Chen of, of CES and Dean Katrina Armstrong of CUIMC. So uh, you can also clap for them, but uh, they will also be saying a few brief remarks after this. So I just want to be real quick because um, we have actually have a very full program today. Uh, one thing I did want to mention is this is also a unique event because it's an opportunity. Uh, it just so happens to coincide when the PhD interviewees come in and get a chance to see all the wonderful biomedical engineering work that's being done here at Columbia. And so um, you're, you see within this symposium not just what we're doing here on the Morningside campus in the engineering school, but how important it is for us to collaborate with um, healthcare providers, medical researchers, clinicians at the medical school. We have a very strong relationship. We have faculty laboratories at both campuses, and you'll hopefully see that um, during the, uh, the day today. We have a full program that includes, uh, I believe it's, four different uh, sessions. We've got neuroscience and bioimaging. We've got genomics and cancer. We've got tissue engineering and biomechanics. And, and those are really some core areas that our department um, has been working in for quite some time and collaborating with uh, uh, folks up at the medical center. Um, but we're also expanding some of our, our interests in a very strategic way. One is in AI for healthcare. Um, and the other is in cellular therapeutics and synthetic biology. And these are actually really exciting areas. For instance, AI for healthcare, everybody hears about AI. I hope some of you had NVIDIA stock because it did actually pretty well uh, right now. Um, but what's important to note is that when one looks at AI, and it's obviously AI and machine learning are moving very quickly, um, there are some real very interesting intersections between AI and medicine. And I recently had a, a graduate, a PhD student that uh, left and went to Google Research, and now he's co-leading all of Google's health uh, AI um, work. And they hired him not because he was a computer scientist and knew AI and machine learning. They hired him because he was a biomedical engineer. He knew the types of problems that were clinically relevant. He understood, understood the biomedical landscape. And now he's using these large language models to do everything from um, create new types of online diagnostics to uh, biomedical discovery. 
So, um, so it's a great time to be a biomedical engineer. Uh, I hope all the students here not only enjoy this, uh, this seminar today, this set of speakers, but also enjoy your whole um, time here. So what I'll do now is hand it over to our Dean of Engineering, um, Professor and Dean Chifuche. Good morning. Uh, I'm Shifu Chen, uh, Dean of Engineering School. You see a nicer picture there than seeing me in person. So, <laughs> uh, really wonderful to be here to welcome you. Uh, this joint event, I think, is the eighth, right? The eighth year for doing the engineering medicine and really uh, signify the importance and unique aspect of Columbia engineering collaboration with medical school. I cannot find any other institution as such a close uh, and really productive tie. We have faculty member in medical school, I have a laboratory there collaborating with a combination researcher and doctor, this is a true doctor, okay? And they're working on medical problem. We have a medical school faculty members, some of them are here today, welcome. Really working with us, teaching, supervising PhD student on the joint research project. We have collaboration with the Sacramento Institute. Uh, Professor Hillman is here leading imaging and also computational experimental research, wonderful lab, you should also take a look there. So this kind of collaboration is truly unique. BME is the youngest biomedical engineering, I'm so used to the acronym, right? <laughs> it's the youngest department in the school, I think it was founded in 2000, and that's the year when I was the chair of electrical engineering. So working with uh, Dr. Van Mao, I think Professor Van Mao was a founding chair, and we envisioned the really a great opportunity of creating a program, a department, biomedical engineering. And later on, I became the senior vice dean of the school in 2013. So has been in the service and leading leadership role to support the, the growth of a department in the past 11 years. So probably more than half of the faculty members during this period have been hired. So I'm so fortunate and so privileged to see the growth of the department right now is the most productive department in research and many other aspects. Okay, don't tell other departments on the other school. Okay. <laughs> and really every uh, faculty member, uh, staff, leadership, and also now the student, many students are here. Really so exciting to see the growth, the development. And Paul talked about AI progress, AI and health, AI medicine. Uh, digital transformation, the whole field of the medical discovery, right? How do you come up with a new material, protein, single cell, therapeutic diagnosis, prevention, early detection? How do we use that to improve the whole field of discovery scientifically and also in practice healthcare? A huge opportunity there. And that's one of the key uh, strategic areas that the school is investing in. In the past few years, we have hired many faculty members. The PhD number of students in the department has grown a lot. Many of you are here for that reason, right? This field is just so exciting. And we are uh, developing many uh, research institutes across the university, data science institute that has more than 300 or 400 faculty members involved. Zuckerman Institute, I mentioned that Elizabeth is involved and other, uh, and she went and other in neuroengineering is uh, being involved. And also uh, in Cancer Center, Uptown Cancer Center, and also Cancer Center here, Elham is involved and many others. So I think we are providing really cross-disciplinary opportunity across campus, across institution. And that's really hard to find in other institutions. I think I'm doing enough marketing already. <laughs> Right. So I think it's a great opportunity for you to see the wonderful breakthrough opportunity. Yeah, the campus is beautiful, it's compact, it's very productive. You can walk to Manhattanville campus, take a subway or take the shuttle, or very easily go to the medical campus. And we collaborate so seamlessly productively with our colleague. And uh, being Katrina Armstrong is a strong supporter for this program and has been tremendously uh, instrumental in helping us to move forward. So welcome to Columbia and hope you have a wonderful day. And let me uh, uh, turn it over to uh, Katrina. Thank you, Shifu. So next we'll have some remarks from Dean Katrina Armstrong, um, who's online uh, at the Medical Center. Thanks so much for having me. And I was just saying how grateful I am to be able to be part of this. I really wish I could be there in person. 
Um, this is such a special event for us at the medical school, across the medical center, and at Columbia University. I will just echo Shifu in saying that I think we really have an incredible partnership between the medical enterprise, however we want to define that, all the way from point of care clinicians to people thinking about the systems and the environment that creates healthcare, all of that enterprise and the School of Engineering. I think I've never imagined a better synergy that could exist to take on interesting problems, to understand the perspective of those delivering care, and then to bring the expertise from biomedical engineering, from across the School of Engineering to creating innovative, high impact solutions. So this is a very special day. I really know it's an outstanding program and that it represents the future of where we need to go in medicine and partnership with engineering as we take on new ways to really improve what we do for our patients and our communities. So congratulations again on having this wonderful program. I'm eager to learn more about what comes out of the day. And thanks again for including me. So um, we'll kick off the program. I'll introduce uh, Professor Jose McFallon Figueroa to take us, take us through. Well, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you, uh, Chair Shida and Deans uh, Ching and Armstrong for their kind welcome and, and opening remarks. Uh, my name is Jose McFallon Figueroa, and I'm an assistant professor in biomedical engineering. And um, with uh, my co-chair, Elam Azizi, I'd like to welcome you again uh, to today's symposium. Now, a couple of housekeeping uh, items, so please silence all devices. Um, so there's no food and drink allowed within Davis Auditorium. That being said, we have multiple breaks across the day as well as lunch, which will take place in Carlton Commons, which is right next door. If you walk out of this building and immediately take a left, you'll see the next building has a semicircle with big windows, that's Carlton Commons. Now we'll also be having a poster session and reception there. Now, uh, we've heard a little bit about the history and motivation for this uh, symposium, but really, you know, the, the goal, as was mentioned, is really that cross fertilization between Columbia campuses. This event started in 2017 with the opening of the Manhattanville campus. And now, in its eighth year, this is the second time the symposium is being held here in Morningside. And we're it's really a, a pleasure and an honor to host all of you. And really, um, you know, there's a, another goal. We also have uh, graduate students uh, uh, interviews and recruitment occurring right now. And it helps as well to build that network of research advisors for all of you um, who will be joining us. And really, you know, you're also gonna meet people who are gonna be your, your colleagues later uh, in life. I um, mean, allows you to get a preview of the diverse research opportunities in uh, Colombia, and we're going to talk, uh, we're going to hear from some wonderful speakers in the areas of neuroscience and biomedical imaging, cancer and genomics, tissue engineering, and biomechanics. So this is uh, um, a breakdown of today's agenda. So again, you have the, the sessions broken up by breaks, which will occur in uh, Carlton Commons. Uh, for those of you uh, who are joining us online, welcome. Uh, the, the webinar portion will end at 5 p.m., and then we'll, you know, the, the in-person uh, part, we'll move over to the poster session and reception over at Carlton Commons. Um, so the, for the poster session, we have 30 fantastic posters that are presented by Columbia uh, trainees that really highlight, again, that diversity of different uh, research that's occurring here, looking to apply those engineering approaches to biomedical questions. Now, uh, for those of you who are going to be in the poster session, going to be presenting, uh, there is a competition as well. Uh, we'll be choosing winners, and those winners will be announced during the evening reception in Carlton Commons, so please don't, don't miss that. Um, and lastly, I, again, I would like to um, give thanks to all of those who have been supporting this uh, uh, effort and this symposium. Again, thanks to Dean uh, Chang, and Dean Armstrong, and uh, Chair Shida for uh, their support. I'd like to thank all of those uh, the speakers and session chairs. You're going to hear a lot from them today. I also would like to thank the posters chairs, uh, Lauren Heckelman and Megan Heenan, um, as well as the poster judges and poster presenters. And um, of course, you know, our amazing team of symposium planners. I think we should again give a big round of applause to Cameron Hadley and Alexis Newman. 
And uh, of course, thanks to uh, my co-chair, Elam Azizi, and professors Hess, Lane, and McIlvain, uh, and Wang, who've been also helping uh, uh, plan the event. And last but not least, uh, our GoBME student volunteers and event staff, you'll be interacting with them today. You probably already have. If you have any questions or you know, you're lost, uh, please find us uh, and ask us uh, for help. Okay, so with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Professor Chi Wang, who will be chairing our first session.